All right, guys, crazy day, uh, crazy opportunity in the market. And uh, I mean, it's it's one of those times where if you are trading, day trading, it's really the time to bulk up your accounts. You can easily destroy them if you're not doing the right thing. But with the amount of opportunities right now, with the amount of volume, action, range on these stocks, it's a wonderful time to be able to take advantage of the volatility and build those accounts. And with that comes, you know, knowing what stocks to trade, knowing how to anticipate them. And one thing that I've been really working on for the last probably six to eight months is not being more aggressive per se, but actually just adding into winners. And I might start off with the same size that I, I typically would in the in the past. And then I have no problem adding, 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 adding to that winner. And when it comes and cracks in my favor, I might take some off, but at least I'll be able to have some size with the house's money and slowly get more and more aggressive in that sense. The entire goal with what I'm trying to do is to use the least possible risk for the best possible reward. I don't want to be bouncing around 10, 20 K like a lot of these guys that, yeah, they might be up a couple million at the end of the year, but it's very stressful for them. It's a, it's ping pong balls bouncing all around, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And at the end of the year, yeah, they're, they're up really nicely, but the stress that's uh, related to that during, you know, each and every single trading day, it's just, it's just not worth it for me. So for me, I like to go ahead and start in something small, go ahead and scale into that. And then as it goes into my favor, I can go ahead and get in full size and go ahead and use that house's money. And that's exactly what we did today. And that's also why a lot of times you'll see either I have very minimal, small losses or very small gains because I'm starting small and then I go ahead and add into that winner. Uh, and the only times that I really do have some larger losses is when I get too overly aggressive on the starter, meaning when I start in too big, I get a little excited about a, a stock that I might miss and uh, I go ahead and size in right away, but not really using any patience or just what everybody has a problem with, just being stubborn. And uh, Taser, t Taser I was stubborn with today, which I'll go over, but uh, first and foremost, VUZI, this was a short that uh, I had from a couple days ago. And I started in the scale uh, over sevens, and then I shorted into the 745, 730, 735s, 720s, and uh, I ended up uh, holding that overnight, and I ended up uh, covering this morning. I ended up having a buy-in, um, today, but I was planning on covering anyway since I'm not going to be trading tomorrow. But this was a, a nice one on the daily chart. This was an up list. This was on the OTCs and it had a really big ramp into the uh, into the up listing. And if they did anything short of spectacular on the bell ringing, this thing was going to pull back and that's exactly what happened. So again, I don't like the liquidity on this one, but there was a, it was a good opportunity that I couldn't pass up. BGMD this morning had a nice gap up this uh, pre-market. Uh, I got short some. I was anticipating the fact that it might go maybe 120s, 130s. I was hoping for out of the gate. So I only had a partial entry. And the reason for that was obviously this overextended chart. Um, so I went ahead and started in. And uh, as I told the chat, any big washouts I was going to cover. So I ended up covering at about 90 cents. And I made about 15 cents on the uh, on the trade. I, I was short between a dollar oh five, dollar oh seven, and then I got one ad at uh, 97 cents. Uh, and then I went ahead and covered at 90s, and uh, at the open, the rest filled after the uh, after the initial little pop. Um, so that was uh, that was the way that we started. I also uh, reshort just very small. I'd like this thing to keep on going. Uh, but I just put on a couple thousand shares just as a maybe a back account type short But this very easily could go 120s 130s. So keep that in mind, especially if you're uh, taking a look at it Because um, the you know the more that holds and the more people are this is a hundred percent short the more crowded it gets and that's really where we get these um, big 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 runs just like we had on Genie today, which I will get to in a minute um, other than that, uh, Baba was, uh, they had the earnings out and immediately came down. These are just a couple uh, ticks that uh, were 
don't really mean anything. Um, but for me, um, I did get short on this uh, pre-market. That was just a quick little trade, uh, anticipating the wash into the open. But uh, Yahoo was the trade of choice for me, and I was a little upset from yesterday because um, you know this we had this huge, huge gap up uh, after hours. <clears throat> and I, I was short. I short at 52, uh, 52 52.05, 52s, and, and I ended up covering. And then the next morning, I didn't really have it on radar, so that was annoying anyway. But uh, it almost had washed out red yesterday. Then I started to get short at 48.50s to 48.80s. Uh, and um, it went a little bit higher than I anticipated. And uh, because of that, I went ahead and sized right down. I was thinking that it was going to probably wash about a buck or two red. And I was dead right, but because it went a little bit more uh, than I expected, I sized down. I just wanted to be safe and, uh, and ended up minimizing what could have been a, a wonderful trade. So then you came in today, and uh, obviously they own a good percentage of uh, BABA, and uh, you know it came right down with it. So basically I got long. I started to uh, buy the, the washouts, and uh, it can't really see it here unless I zoom in, so I'll do that. But um, you know, I bought a little bit of the washouts, and I was I was trying to see if this would end up holding. And uh, because Baba started to Alibaba started to rebound at this point, but this was this ended up being a little bit weaker than Alibaba. So I went ahead and ditched it, uh, and then I started to buy the washouts, and that was the play in chat is basically buying the washouts and. I, what I wanted to see was 4240s, and the reason for that is because when it was coming back down, 4240s just absorbed uh, a ridiculous amount of stock. So um, that was where I wanted to see it basically hold from that point forward, and then I could risk on the 42s or 4220s, which was basically the uh, prior low. So I started to get long, and I was looking for a 4350 to 44 push, and uh, I went ahead and sold half in this area over here. Uh, and then you can see, put in a peak a couple times, and I let it test, and retest, and retest. And at this point, uh, Alibaba started to pull back, and uh, you can see lower high, lower high, lower high. And I actually sold just perfect timing. Um, I got out at 40, uh, 43.66 and uh, ended up fading <clears throat> through the rest of the day, which ended up being a pretty perfect um, exit. Later on, you can see that started to kind of do the ABCD type pattern and I went ahead and got long at 4306 and we had a nice little rally back up. I didn't make it very far just because I was starting to focus on Genie which uh, is probably the most important thing to talk about. So Genie as I told everybody in the morning you know this is definitely not one that you want to be shorting, you want to be fighting, you want to be um, doing anything with if you're a new member, if you're not familiar, what can happen with these things. And I think the biggest thing to understand here is it just did a reverse split. There's only about 4 million shares outstanding. And when it trades, in this case, 40 million shares, that's 10 times the outstanding shares, 10 times the float, excuse me, that is available. That means that over and over and over and over again, anybody over and over and over again 10 times anybody that wanted to sell could have sold and the move no longer matters all that matters is the momentum all that matters is is there volume are there bids is it continuing is it holding trend is it holding higher highs is it setting up in a familiar pattern something that we're familiar with an ABCD type breakout and you know, for those of you guys that have Tandem Trader and, and whatnot, obviously you guys know, you know, you have this nice little ramp up, and sure, this this kind of went up and skipped up on low volume, so you might not necessarily have chased it because there isn't really that great a risk versus reward. But as I told the chat, the only thing that you should be doing with this thing is buying dips, if anything at all. Be careful on the short side because these are the types that uh, end up, you know, really um, screwing people's accounts and putting them out of business. So. You can see here, nice ABCD type setup where you know you've got the big move, then it pulls back, starts to grind up, higher low, starts to tighten up a little bit, and you've got that high day breakout. Not only do you have the high day breakout, it's coupled with a huge volume bar. 
And as it, as it continues to, to break out, the thing to kind of notice here is that breakout, this was the prior high, breaks out, makes a new high, but now that prior resistance acts as support right here. From that point forward, you need to be extremely careful with any shorts. So I had started into the short, into the parabolics, and I had suggested obviously covering into the dips. And uh, I had told everybody here at the 330 level, you can see that it, it started to peak out a few times uh, at this 350 level. It was test, 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 and it looked like it was finally starting to crack, went up one more time, and uh, it had it, you know, it stuffed into that 350s and pulled back. So I told chat, if it does not break 330 on this try, then it's about to go. There, there's a move that's very close. And just based on this reaction, based on it stuffing into this move, which we talk about on VSR on Tandem Trader, um, that example, the whole stuffing idea, um, when it does that, if it does not immediately wash out and break trend, you need to be careful because that's when the trend change is going to happen. And as you can see, it was onward and upward with the next leg. And then this is the first of many intraday squeezes. So at that point, um, I was shorting and I was shorting very small as I told everybody, but the times that you want to short is into the parabolics. You don't want to be shorting when everybody's thinking, all right, it finally pulled back, I'm gonna go ahead and get short. You don't wanna be shorting into the fours. You don't wanna be shorting into the support where it was before. And you can just draw a line uh, and see this 380, uh, 390 level rather, um, that I was talking about. And the 390 level came because this is where it consolidated before. You can see, yeah, there's a couple wicks that are under the 390s, but each time it reclaimed and came back up and held that 390 as the base. It did it again here. So until that actually breaks and holds, you're still, you still need to be scalping this trade. You still need to be taking profits into the pullbacks because you're still on the front side of the move. So uh, in hindsight, obviously it's easier because you can draw a line across here and see that it stuffed people three times, but it did come back three times and that's really difficult um, to stomach, especially if you have some size. So that's why I was suggesting to cover into the dips, but um, the, the last time that I told everybody, you know, it started to really ramp up and I said, this is the time that you want to be shorting these types because it's when everybody wants it. It's when it looks like it's about to break out. It's when the volume's high and everybody's freaking out. You want to be on the opposite side of what everybody else is doing. Everybody's been calling this thing a short since the high twos, the threes, the three fifties, bashing it, bunch of other stuff. But you know what? The stock continues to go up. So at that point, it's just a trading vehicle and you need to be able to anticipate and react to other people's emotions. And that's these big candles, these big ramps with big volume on the offers. And when they push up and the 360s, there's a bunch of 20K, 20K, 50K, whatever, a ton of volume and it doesn't really budge. I want to be shorting into that pop because by the time it does pull back, all that volume that just came out, they're going to panic and it's going to slap right back down. And that's exactly what we were able to take advantage of today. And unfortunately for me, I covered in the 365 level uh, over here, uh, but it's already down to almost threes after hours. So um, really great job by uh, David. Uh, I know Greg had some and I know a bunch of other guys had it, but um, this wasn't just a couple, you know, a couple shares here and there. This actually traded quite a few uh, shares after hours. So again, float rotation, don't fight the trend. If you, if you want to step in front of it, you need to use less size. You need to be okay with the next whole numbers or half dollar marks. Um, other than that, we had a couple other great ones. FLKS, uh, this was a short idea IPO. Um, it was heavily bashed coming in and uh, ended up working out perfectly. Uh, and like I said, Taser, uh, this one, I was, I've been excited about the short. Uh, I got short out of the open. I was up nicely, but it was traded a little thin. I ended up fighting it. I got stubborn and I ended up covering uh, pretty much in the 2740s area.